G'day Ziggy D here and in this video I want to give you guys uh, some of my initial thoughts on the upcoming uh, MMO action RPG Marvel Heroes. So thanks to someone on my uh, Facebook page, I've been pointed onto this game and it initially wasn't on my radar at all. Uh, I'm like a, I'm a fan of some of the Marvel, Marvel like movies and comics and uh, some of the IP and some of the games that have come out, but I wasn't really uh, you know keeping an eye on the development of different Marvel games. However, someone on my Facebook pointed out that it is actually an action RPG MMO, and I started looking at it and started looking at some videos and got pretty interested. So since then. I've done a lot of research because I want to know, you know, this game's coming up pretty soon actually, like in less than a month. And, um, you know, I want to know if, it, if it'll feel like it'll, I think I'll enjoy it or whether it'll be something worth covering for me on YouTube. And, uh, you know, first impressions were that, you know, Marvel, okay, Spider-Man, Iron Man, Hulk, awesome, awesome stuff. Action RPGs, I love action RPGs, fantastic. Now, uh, combining two awesome things doesn't always end up being awesome, as you've probably known from you know seeing other uh, genre collisions in different games, people trying out different, meshing different genres together. Sometimes it can work really well, and other times it can't. And uh, I don't know. In my research of Marvel Heroes, a few alarm bells have gone off so far. So I'm just going to go over some of my, my some of my initial thoughts and a few of the things that I've found alarming about the game so far. Uh, so the first thing is. Combining an action RPG with Marvel, like where you're actually playing the actual Marvel heroes, uh, there's a big there's a big problem. Like first up, combat is fine. Like combat, the action RPG combat is satisfying. You know, click fest. You know, lots of cool flashy abilities, and that really suits having heroes as your characters. And I think that's really cool. So that obviously those two things go really well together. However, the other 50% of action RPGs is the loot. Uh, it's about getting, you know, awesome gear and putting in your character, seeing it on your character and all that jazz, you know, like playing with and finding, you know, the right loot that suits your build and, uh, you know, customizing and fighting efficient builds and all that sort of jazz. Uh, now, with Marvel, I don't feel like this works really well. Like, sure, you've got, like, say, Iron Man, he could, like, you know, in your head he could upgrade his different armor pieces, upgrade his, like, his hand blasters and all that stuff, and you could find stuff in the game to upgrade that, and you could see that as progression in your suit, you could see your suit getting more impressive. However, when you look at another hero like the Hulk, the Hulk doesn't use gear, sure he could maybe get some more powerful pants, but mostly he just smashes stuff and throws the environment around and all that sort of stuff, so obviously really cool in combat, but I really dislike in role-playing games or action RPGs when you get new loot and you don't see it appear in your character. So the system in Marvel Heroes is that uh, you get these costumes, and these this is you know a good system. It's tried and true. League of Legends costumes very uh, very popular. You know you can buy these through the microtransactions. Uh, it's a free-to-play game, but you know you can spend a bit of money and get these alternate costumes, which is really cool. You know there's lots of different costumes th throughout the different lore from the different Marvel movies and comics and cartoons and all that different thing. You can get all of these different types of costumes, and that's really cool. However, that is disconnected from the actual gear that you find in game. So you can craft these costumes, or you can buy them, but you're also getting this separate gear. Like you might put, you know, I saw in one of the videos I watched, uh, Storm picked up a new cape. She put on the cape. Nothing changed on the character. Pretty, you know, pretty unexciting. I find that really troubling when I'm playing the game, so that uh, made me initially hesitant because I really like, you know, seeing the loot, getting cool new helmet or cool new gloves or a cool new weapon or something like that. But it's just not something that can be represented very well in a Marvel game. But that's, you know, that's something that can be looked past if the game is fun and the, you know, maybe the costume crafting will be really satisfying. So here's the the next alarm bell that went off for me. Uh, it appears to be a very stripped down action RPG. Now I'm sure, you know, myself and I'm sure a lot of you guys have been really enjoying the depth of Path of Exile and maybe even like Diablo 3 provided, you know, still a fair amount of depth although it was a bit lacking in some areas. It seems like Marvel Heroes has even less depth than Diablo 3 in terms of uh, character customization and things like that. As I said, the gear is basically just uh, slightly increasing numbers, which is, I guess, kind of similar to Diablo 3. Uh, but what I've seen in terms of skill choices so far is pretty limited there's a few skill trees they said they will be adding to him to that so that's pretty good but i haven't seen anything like stat allocation or uh increasing base character stats or anything like that now it's possible they just haven't been shown in any of the videos but you know i can only go off what i've seen so far from the different reviews and uh, videos and so far it seems very basic the combat itself also seems very stripped down and basic so in diablo 3 you've got things like you know uh ground effects you know you've got to step out of the molten don't stand in the molten and 
you know, that's that adds a little bit of complexity to combat. Path of Exile have, has this even further, where, you know, you've got to be really aware of the different affixes and the way that different enemies fight, and, you know, have di your different resistances and things sorted of out. There's a fair bit of depth to the combat. But so far from what I've seen of Marvel Heroes is it's very much just stand there and click until things die. Uh, now that's a bit of a shame, but again, we can't really judge that fully until we see the full game because often these games can be very easy in the beginning but get more challenging down the road, you know, like much later on uh, towards the high end, towards the end game. So it's possible that Marvel Heroes will also have more difficulty and depth in combat, but uh, all of the reviews and everything I've read of the closed beta so far and all of the closed beta v videos and footage I've seen so far don't really suggest that. So it seems like it's going to be fairly casual action RPG MMO. Obviously when you join, uh, you know, you can join action RPG and MMO together, then sometimes you're going to have to sacrifice certain features that don't work well in the MMO in environment. And, you know, it's pretty cool to see like these big uh, zones full of lots of different heroes fighting all at once. And that's, you know, what's really exciting about being an MMO. Uh, but it also being an action RPG, you know, with a lot of features taken out and a lot of depth taken out, maybe maybe won't be so exciting for myself and maybe a lot of you guys, a lot of my subscribers. But nonetheless, it's still a Marvel game, so something still definitely worth looking at. Uh, the other thing I was sort of setting off alarms was the microtransaction system. Now it's had a from what I've read so far, it's had a pretty shaky and rough sort of uh, closed beta where a lot of things have been, you know, there's been a lot of bait and switching sort of going on. So an example of this was originally this ultimate pack came out and they said there was a limited number of these and those people will get closed beta keys and it had like some bonus currency or something like that. It had like $100 of in-game currency or something like that. And they said that that would be limited time. And then it got to the limited time, I guess they realized they were making a lot of money for it and they decided to extend it out. Now, not a big issue, but people that, you know, bought into that thinking it would be something very exclusive, uh, you know, we're sort of gypped on that. So it's been a little bit dodgy and the next big thing that uh, I guess I find a little bit sus. So first, first, I'll just go over what these actually are. So these give you early access to the full game and some give you closed beta access as well. Uh, generally they are like, uh, so like the starter pack is like you pick one hero and you get some extra costumes for them, some in-game currency and things like that, some XP boost, item find boost. Now costumes and unlocking characters I don't have a problem with at all because those can both be done in-game and essentially that aesthetic as well. The heroes aren't so aesthetic but the costumes are very much aesthetic. Uh, now things like one hour XP boosts and item find boosts I think are a little bit not so good, they're a little bit pay to win-ish. But then the one that really set off alarm bells in my head when I was looking at these different packs was permanent XP boost and item find boost. Uh, that is very much the definition of pay to win in my mind. So that means that anyone, you know, no one, no free to play player, person who hasn't bought the ultimate pack will be able to compete with someone who has bought the ultimate pack in terms of like leveling up their characters really quickly. Now that might not seem like a huge deal and maybe it's not a huge deal, but imagine Going back to Diablo 3, the race to Paragon 100, that was pretty exciting. Some people took that very seriously. And you know, and when uh, when Paragon 100 was achieved by the first person ever, that was pretty pretty exciting, quite the achievement. That person is very well known for that now. However, now imagine that uh, it was possible in Diablo 3 to buy, you know, XP boosts or to buy like a permanent 5, 10, whatever percent increase to your XP gains. Uh, that achievement would be, you know, it would come under question, it would be much less exciting in the end, like, oh, this guy achieved Paragon level 100 first, but he paid a bunch of money to do that, you know, he, he, he paid to win, essentially. So that takes away a lot of the excitement of that, but, you know, there's there's lots of different uh, shades of free-to-play and uh, microtransactions and pay-to-wins, and uh, although that sets off some alarm bells, again, it's not, it's not a huge thing, and if the game does end up being really fun, then maybe, you know, those sorts of little things won't be such a big deal. But so far, it feels like this game is going to be very cut down, very basic, uh, not going to have too much depth or long-term appeal to it, and it feels a little bit cash-grabby at the Marvel Heroes IP with, you know, the way they're selling the costumes and the way they're selling all of the heroes. They've seen the success of things like the League of Legends system, and, you know, that's Let's let's take the best elements of that, the best elements of recent popular action RPGs and MMOs and put them together and, you know, have a game that maybe will be really fun, maybe it'll make a lot of money, so, I don't know. <laughs> 
I'm definitely not calling it crap yet or anything like that. I haven't, haven't played it. I haven't seen what's other than what's been presented to us. And I am looking forward to trying it out for myself. And I definitely will be trying it out. And you know, if it if it feels worth it, I'll also be making some content for you guys. Uh, it's pretty hard to not be excited for a Marvel sort of game like this. And also just for a new big action RPG, essentially. Uh, but yeah, be be hesitant. Really do your research if you've been considering buying a supporters pack. You know, read the reviews from closed beta. Read what people are saying. Maybe if you can, uh, you know, talk to someone who is in the closed beta, find out what they think, and look at what the actual the supporter packs give you and whether you think you'll be playing this game for a long time. Because re as recent debacles like the si recent SimCity thing have sort of pointed out to us, maybe we shouldn't be uh, pre-ordering all of our games and sending a lot of money to developers before they actually prove that their game has longevity. So anyway, that's my thoughts on Marvel Heroes so far. And as I said, I do plan on checking this game out. Uh, thanks to the person again on Facebook who pointed it out uh, to me because, you know, I had no idea about this game that it was even coming out. So, yep, yeah, still reasonably excited, but very cautious, very cautious. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.